specifically is what <clears throat> the validity of the text itself the verses themselves this sure. is a, a specific issue so mm. when i was speaking with him i went to the gospel of mark specifically right sure. because it's very time consuming <clears throat> to talk about all of the books of the new testament all of the four gospels for example and the validity in each book i give the example i haven't got too long so let's talk about mark's gospel let's okay but what do you mean by first. validity Validity talking about is the, the integrity of the text basically. What does he mean by that? The integrity of the text referring to can we trust what's written? Is this the text that was written by the authors originally? Right, right. Basically, right. the you study textual criticism, I presume, right? Yeah, yeah. May I ask, like, what I've got like a PhD in no, it. No, no, yeah. I mean, yeah. I have honestly. Oh, yeah. But which textual school do you subscribe to out of curiosity? What do you mean by that? Textual school. So there's four schools, right? David stated by David Allen Black in his introductory book on the topic. When right. you when you study textual criticism, mm -hmm. there's introductory books, right? David Allen Black, you know who that is, right? I'm not that familiar. Okay, no, that's fine. So he has a book. Okay, I'm not gonna ask you the question. Just no, ask point. the question. No, no, there's yeah, no yeah, point asking him. Jumping around. There's no point asking him what textual schools he follows when he doesn't know the text. Yeah, so ask me more what you're getting to, because that's not your point, is it? Your point is not which school do you follow. No, but I want to know your methodology. Because the right. Well, you'll find that out by talking to me. Okay. So you understand the difference between the schools, right? Okay, why are you going back to these schools? Because we have to, I want to understand your approach. Well, just talk about the methodologies in general, and then I'll give you my opinion related to that. Right. Again, I haven't studied at university at this. And I haven't, I'm 19, I haven't studied at university. Right, right, okay, my point is though, is that the bigger topic and the point you're driving to, I don't even know what it is yet, because you haven't made it. Why are you trying to critique it then? I, I don't know what it is. I'm waiting for you to tell me it. Speak. You've just been you like, okay, first of all, do you know these books? And I'm like, no, wait, no, what? What's that got no. to do with your point? The first thing I said right. was, I told you what was happening. The discussion made me to Yeah, integrity. that's fine. Yeah, you did, yeah. So, so, so but again, that's not the point. Said, that's not because the point. Because you just point. said that I jumped to ask you a question, okay. but that's not true. Why are you being so defensive? So, no, no, just not, tell me your point. Colin, it's because you're being dishonest. Dishonesty about what? I don't even know what your point is. I don't even know what your point is. How can I be dishonest about something when I don't even know what it is? I'm telling you why you're dishonest. You've spoke to me for like two minutes and you already calling me up, dishonest. I, up, yeah. I just want to know your maybe, point. Maybe you need to think why that is. Let me explain my What point. is your point? Interrupted, but let me get to the point. Okay, don't you ask just, me about books. Not, I, I know you don't know about tell, them. So tell me, tell me. I'm going to tell brother, you. Brother, I'm not embarrassed. I haven't studied this at university. I'm telling you that openly. Okay, then why are you talking about it? I'm get to your I point. The point was, when I was engaging with him, we were okay. talking about... Yes, I know this. You've said this already. So I did tell you that. Yes, that's what you I'm saying. You haven't I mentioned did. the... I said you haven't mentioned the point. No, that is the point. The point is the that point you is had a discussion was, with yeah, him. The point is, with all due respect, your relevancy is very... Okay, minute. you had a discussion yeah, with him. Discussion nice. With him. My discussion was with him. So okay. With all due respect, and you said you, you, you wanted to talk discussion. to me. You said you said wanted to talk to me. I literally walked past and you went, I want to talk to you. Just one second. I said you came actually pretty late because I came two hours ago. That's fine, that's fine. If you want to listen to it, let me just extend the way I was. I said still doesn't sound like a point to me. I said I yeah. wanted to speak to you. I came two hours earlier, but you yeah. came pretty late because I have to go soon. Okay, that's what happened. Fine. Then you asked this me what's going the time on. I then you asked me what's way. going on. That's yeah. fine. I've just come to London. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Not even for this, anyways. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. So I was telling you, you asked what we were talking about, basically. So yes. I told you we were talking about the preservation reliability of the text. Specifically, yep. we talked about the Gospel of Mark. Okay. Now, what the, is the point? The, the validity of the text. So okay. is the text preserved? That's what we were talking about. Okay. In what sense do you mean preserved? Yeah, no problem. An additional omission by someone other than the author. <laughs> right, so you're talking about purely textual preservation. Purely textual preservation. Yeah, so, so you don't mean by... You don't mean, you, no one uses that term. Textual pure, preservation. Purely textual preservation. What is this? Textual What's preservation. A, purely textual preservation. What's that? Of course. Okay, it's, okay. okay, so for example, basic stuff, right? I can get a text and I can change a word in it, but not change the meaning of the text. Are you the author? Yeah. Uh, no, no, are you, okay. are, you changing the word, are you changing the text of a work? So, okay, you Chris okay. went to Speaker's Corner. No. Da, 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 da. No, no, but the important I can take certain letters or certain words out of that and still retain the meaning. No, no, but that's not the argument though. Right, We're okay, so what is saying, the argument? Saying that the, mean, okay. saying the meanings that I'm going to make a point that I've got a question about this. I'm not going to quiz you, don't worry. Saying that the meanings there is irrelevant whether it's been corrupted, that's changing the goalpost. It's, uh, it's changing the goalpost from has it been corrupted? What goalpost? I'm telling you, the goal, I'm going to tell you. Do you think I'm going to talk about the yeah, but How can you say I'm the gonna... goalpost has been changed when you haven't told me your point I'm going fully to tell yet? You, if you all me finish, I know right I'm now, you. I know, I know, but all I'm I know right you. now is that you're saying I am challenging the preservation of the Gospel of Mark. 
Look, right? Yes. And okay, and I asked you what you meant by preservation. And I'm telling you... And you went, any omission to the text? No, no, but you asked me to okay. define, how do I define corruption, right? I'm telling you, yeah. I define corruption as an addition or omission by okay. anyone other than the author, keywords. By anyone other than the author. Yeah, and the key, okay. I'll tell you why it's important. Mm. Your example, you wrote a text, whatever, mm. Chris said this, mm. you changed the word. Mm. Is that, are you changing the word of your own text or not? If you are, it's your own text, it wouldn't be corruption, right? Because, for example... Well, technically it would be, but... It would, according to which definition? The scholarly definition of give corruption me the, of text. Reference. If I if I change a text later on, have I corrupted it? No, if you're if it's your own text, you've not corrupted it. No. If it's no, it's just me who's corrupting it. it. No, according to who? Give me your reference. Corruption is a change or a variant in a text. Right, okay, what's your reference just for that? By someone other than the author. I'm telling you. No, you, know, you don't need that by it. the author. It's I'm anybody. Telling, I'm telling just, I'm if you take a text speech. and I went up to it and I changed it, even if I was the original author, I've still corrupted that text. No. You, so wait, wait, wait. If, if, I, to, if, if I wrote a book diary, and then I changed the entire book, diary, even though I'm the author, I've not corrupted it. You're the author, it's your book. If, if, I, wrote, if I was J.R. Tolkien and I wrote The Lord of the Rings, yeah. I then went back to that book and changed the entire thing to be something totally different. Yeah, is that not textual not corruption? corruption? I'm going to tell you, let me give you an example. If I wrote that is corruption. and I chose to change a word in a diary, I'm No, no, the whole thing, the whole thing. You just changed it again. I never said the whole thing. I said changing a word. No, I'm asking you hypothetically the whole thing. Is that textual corruption? No, that's not your own problem. Your problem is with my You won't answer it because he knows it's corruption. No, if I it's change the entire that, no, text, I haven't corrupted it. I'm going to give my justification. How have I lied? What lied? Why? Of what? Because you're I mean, saying first of all, it's the academic Do you just like, do you just like randomly yeah, insult yeah, periodically yeah, throughout a discussion? Yeah, I don't know. Like this is just right. If I change a text, no matter if I'm the author of it, and I totally change the entire thing to be about a totally different thing, have I corrupted the text? You're not corrupted your text. And secondly, my point. I don't think you know what corruption is. Okay, so give me your reference. You just said academic yeah. definition. Give the reference. No, 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 no. We're not discussing to so give a reference. Right. So, a so when let's give look at New reference. Testament scholarship. No, 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 no. Let me let me okay. Let me quote. When we look at New Testament scholarship, if you look at um, if you look at those who study this, and when they talk about texts that are corrupted, Daniel Wallace, N.T. Wright, Ruth Metzger, F.F. Yes, no, Bruce, no, you can go, no, keep going on. Yeah, keep if you look at the terms of when the text is uh, a variant or a known thing, they will use a technical term of corruption of the text. They won't even talk about whether or not it's done by the same author or a different author, because that's a separate question to about the actual corruption itself. I want to you Thank so you. The there we go. Definition as you just did. You just use the word. You disagree with that. You corruption. actually disagree with that. I'm saying to you. What did you say? What, what is textual corruption can only be done by the author. What did you say? I'm saying that when scholars look at the text and whether it has variants, right? or as they will probably use textual say, corruptions, the question of whether or not it was by the same author at a later point or a different author is a totally different question to whether or not there are variants or corruptions in the text. First of all, vari the variation go. is different to a corruption. A anyway. variation is, okay, variant Let's exists move on, guys. Oh, geez. First of all, a variant does not entail corruption. I'll tell you why. Oh. If you have a variant in the manuscript tradition, it doesn't now mean that someone's gone in, in, with an intent to corrupt the text, right? Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. It could mean, it could be could a spelling error. Yeah. Could be a scribal error. Well, if you study yeah. New Testament textual criticism, mm -hmm. you know most of the variants are leaning on you. Most yeah, yeah, yeah. of the variants scribal are spelling errors. Error. Yeah, 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 small scribal errors, right? Yeah. It's not a problem. Why? Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say that's an example of corruption. For example, if I'm arguing. No, textual corruption, that would be an actual thing. Let's repeat it again. Textual corruption means yeah. a change in the text, and but you I'm know changes you by manuscripts. Give a reference. Give a reference. Uh, any any basic uh, any, person who studied this. Okay, the New Testament is corrupt. Anyone who studied this can justify that. Like I'm asking you for your reference. You just, you just Where's your reference for your understanding? You just, okay, now you're doing a two cocaine okay, fallacy. You did, two cocaine yeah. fallacy. I don't need to give a reference. No, no, you do. You don't need to give a reference. No, no, uh, not for the basic understanding. That all academia, yeah. In academia, they have a, a textual of corruption is when a text is changed, and we know it's changed at points through variants. The New Testament has been changed. Any text. Text, well, including the Quran, text, by the way. Yeah, I know so the any Quran text. No. Thank no you. Right. You so that's about? a form of corruption in the text, because there are textual manuscripts that differ. No, it's mixed, very you're, basic. You're mistake, it's, it's very basic. basic. Why am I making a mistake? mistake? Prove that I'm making a mistake. Give me your source. What do you think I'm going to do? Give me your source. The sort of, I'm making an argument. I'm not making a. Ah, so you don't need to give a source. But earlier you demanded that I needed to give a source. Let me tell you. If you let me speak for more than five seconds, you'll know that that's completely disanalogous. Why? You've made a claim that the scholars say X, Y, Z. That's valid for me to say. Give me a source. General scholarship. Yes. General scholarship. General scholarship. No problem. So that's valid for me to say. Give a reference. Me saying. You that reference. your position is wrong does mm -hmm. not require a reference because I'm does. making an argument. No, you're, you're making, making an the appeal opposite to scholarship. You're making an appeal to scholarship. I'm making an argument for myself oh. without appealing to scholarship. So I don't need a reference. So your, you your view is not family scholarship? Which view? The view you just said you make Which an argument what? for. What's the view that I'm making an argument for? The, the idea that textual corruption is not a thing if it's done by the same it's author. Not my issue. That's just 
that was the, your the whole point. I, no, no, but the bit that I just corrected you on now is not that. You said it's corrupt. Is that not his whole the, point? You said it's corrupt. Just one second. But the bit that I just corrected yeah. you on is not that. You said that it's corruption to the text. I'm saying you're equating the text with a textual tradition. For example, Wait, what? That's the yeah. first time you've brought that up. Textual tradition. No, because you've been talking about the text the whole thing. For two seconds, well, that was my intent to mention. If you've you been talking about the text. If you stop interrupting. We we'll get to the later. Talking about the text. No shit, Sherlock. We're not talking about the trees, are we? Of course, we're talking about the text and the textual tradition. You, wait, what? You, okay, all right, all right, fine. Yeah, I'm talking is, about pure manuscripts. Yeah, manuscripts which profess the textual tradition, not the text. Okay, itself. yeah, you can you it can compound the, text, the manuscripts to make you. a tradition, yeah, sure. The text is but just on a per level basis, a, differing manuscripts with different different, different variants is a corruption of text from a purely academic uh, point of view. I mean, if you want to say that the New but Testament, if, if you it want isn't, to prove that it. as corruption, if you want to say that's corruption. That I don't mind moving on, but I definitely disagree. I don't see you have a reference. I don't know why, like, whether it's done by the author or not by the author makes any difference to it. It's still yeah, corruption. Because the text has changed, a text was written, and then later was erased and changed. You're not saying manuscript in a vacuum. Manuscript got to relevant to a, a, a point. Manuscript yeah. of what? What do you mean? Manuscript of? When you say manuscript. Yeah, yeah. Manuscript of what? Whatever the original was. Because presumably, well, we don't have the originals Mark. anymore. No, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. So we have the copies of copies of copies of the originals. So then it's imperative to know when they say the original of Mark, yeah. what are you claiming that original of Mark to be? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I mean, both bo bo and oh, look as a text, mm -hmm. and, and what's the source of it? Is it the gospel of Jesus? Mm -hmm. I'm sure we have to go back to, are we trying to go back to Jesus or, or something? When you say gospel of Jesus, what do you mean by that? And Jesus. I say that because Muslims and Jesus. Christians have very different views about what that no. means. Um, Jesus received a message. Yeah. Okay. Even said um, the, the quote unquote Mark and all this, 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 this anonymous um, Kone Greek writing. Yeah. But the language there, you have that, you go back to the Kone Greek. Kone Greek. That's the right. source manuscript you have. Yeah, yeah. But then we have on the other hand, they're saying we can't say for certain, you just speak this Greek, he speak Aramaic. That's his language, we can vote for him. It's a very popular opinion that he did speak some Greek. Which is the evidence that he speaks Greek. Because the fact that, okay, so his disciples had Greek names. We have epigraphy, so we have rock inscriptions, we have poet, uh, pottery with inscriptions by Jews written in Greek. Hellenized the, Jews. The, yeah, the whole period was Hellenized hundreds of years before by Alexander, Alexander the Great. The, great uh, the Jews actually so the went out. Wait, wait, wait. The, wait one one second. Well, one second. There's more, there's more. The fact that the Jews actually translated the Old Testament in the Septuagint, the Old, uh, the Old Testament into Greek yeah. for supposedly someone in Egypt yeah. is proof that, yeah, there were definitely Jews that knew Greek. So give me one cut. So you agree with all that? Give me one cut. One, one second. Give me one cut. I mean, if you want to deny that, I mean, it's just. This is not my topic. To me, source criticism and stuff is. So surely they are. Mm. Like they have statements in Hebrew yeah. that they quoted in Hebrew, yeah. allegedly when he's on the cross, and they retained yeah. um, the actual Hebrew language. Yeah. Like, mm. for example, yeah. the Gospel so, of Matthew. So, give me mm. one verbatim verb quote. I'm sure they can give one example if that's the case. Example what? That, that in Greek, a statement that Christ uttered in, the, in Greek. Verbatim statement. The reason we believe that Christ spoke in Greek is A, the context of where he is, the historical context, but also the fact that the Gospels themselves talk about him talking to people who would have almost certainly spoke Greek. And can I uh, say who, who did he speak to? Like, who are those people? Who speak to? So Pontius Pilate is one. There is the Syrio-Phoenician woman at the well. That's another one. So there's reason just internally from the text. Because so otherwise you would have to assume that whenever he spoke to these people who almost certainly would have spoke Greek, he had a translator around. But the question which the just Christ, seems the less plausible. The Christ yeah. initiated that proposed yeah. to speak to them by going on out his way to speak to them, or is the reverse? Wait, what do you mean? Sorry, say again. Who initiated the speech? Um, who um, initiated the speech? With Pontius Pilate. When you conversate with each other, they Christ. spoke directly to each other. Yeah, but who initiated that um, conversation? Is it Christ or Pontius Pilate? Who proposed? Um, who proposed? I don't know who spoke the very first word according to the gospel. I can't. But I can't. That, the scripture is that they're pulling him by force. So obviously. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Christ is there, is there on trial and he's being brought on force? Yeah. Yes. I don't know who actually, so according Christ, to the written accounts. So Christ the never goes word. out his way to speak to them. Sure. Because a man who says who want clear the disciples going to go, and, and and like in the book of Acts, um, Peter make it very clear. We know up and through the whole of Judea, beginning at the baptism. Mm. So the mission of Christ stay and within the perimeter of Judea by Peter own admission. No, so after his resurrection. After his resurrection, Christ is clear in Matthew 28, 19, in Acts 1, 8, that they are to go to every uh, every nation and to proclaim the, the name the, And that's, what, and that's exactly what was dealing those additions that he was dealing with. This, this thing came later. Mm, it's right? generally the additions that's exactly right. what I was dealing with. I'm not sure. Are you are you familiar with the decision? On that the, one? The, the, the we come full circle back to this point. Yeah, now we yeah, come yeah, to that you. one. Yeah, come do, on. do you know which one he's referring to? Or was you not here for that? Um, me, uh, no, no, I wasn't it's, here for that. So I, I want to know what oh, your okay. opinion is. The long running of Mark is Yeah, it wasn't just that though. Because I mentioned like I want to ask like me. I want to explain them to you. Like tell you which what I said, and I want to know if you agree with them that it's corruption or not. Just out of curiosity. So, for example. 
I'm going to tell you and I'll see if you agree with it and we can go into the evidence or whatever for some of them. So for example, would you say that Mac chapter 16 verse 9 through 20 is a later addition? Uh, is a corruption to the text? So I'm of two points and I'm not sure which is correct. Either it is a later tradition or it was part of an original that was later lost. It was, what was the second point? It was part of um, an original that, like, um, let, me, let me make this clear. So the longer ending of Mark in whatever its original state was, yeah. was at some point lost. So you don't believe we have the, the longer ending, right? Yeah. So it ends at verse 8, right? Yeah, so 16 end, verse okay, 8. If that's the case, but either of those views would entail the fact that mm. verse 9 through 20 is a little addition. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So nine through twenty is a little addition, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, it, it's more like an, an addition. So uh, whether I take uh, whether I take the longer ending to be authentic, and then after I make a decision on that, do I then think there could have been an original that once was yeah, there yeah, but like it's now lost? Whether it's been yeah. lost or whether it yeah. actually ends at verse eight, you're talking about, right? Whether we believe yeah. it's been lost. Okay. But yeah. the, the, as we have it today, including verse nine through twenty, is a form of corruption. It's, it's an addition. It's not long there, right? You would agree. We don't uh, know the early yeah, I mean, I think I think it's it's very presumptuous to say definitively that you know what you don't know. Okay, so the church would, would be largely like, hey, we're aware of this, and we may have a tradition about this, yeah. but we're, we're open enough to, to have debates about whether or not this is actually correct. But you would agree that the evidence goes against its authenticity, though, right? For example, it's been yeah. in Codex Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, and I believe, correct if I'm wrong, Alexandrianus. I know it's yeah. Codex Sinaiticus and Vaticanus. Well, the the case is, is all probabilistic, right? Because we're talking about history. Everything is, uh, yeah, yeah, so exactly. really, you can make a probable case against it being um, an actual part of the I original know. canon. Fine. But that doesn't definitively mean it is. It okay, just means that it's hard to make a point for it. When we talk about history, though, Exactly, and it doesn't change the narrative. Yeah, yeah, so no, it's when we talk about history, we're talking yeah. about probability to begin with. As you yeah, know, of course. Right? Yeah, yeah. So that, that point is, to me, it's like, we already agree with that. We don't need to say, we already know that. Yeah, like, yeah but it's important to remind and to understand, yeah. But so your two positions, one that it is a, that it's corrupt, that it's a literary edition and it ends at verse 8, and the other position is that what, that this is, that there's a longer ending that has been lost. Potentially, yeah. Both of those I'm positions, those on are the point. only two positions you hold? Yeah. That, and that means, if, if okay, that means that you, all, one, both of those positions agree on one thing. What? That the one that we have today is yeah. not authentic. Wait, what? How did you arrive at that? I'll tell you why. Wait, wait, one, when you say the yeah, one, do you, you mean the one Gospel of Mark, or no, no, what no, no, are you referring saying, to? No, 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 I'm saying the Gospel of Mark, mm. chapter 16, verse 9 through 20. Oh, to spell that specific yeah, yeah, yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For this six, well, I mean, this it's probably. Moment. Okay, but, but your two positions that you said, one of yeah. these two are either yeah, you're true. you're repeating yourself now. Yes, yeah, yes. You, yeah, because you went on a tangent, you said, oh, what do you mean, what's your evidence for that? I just quoted you. That was the evidence. Like, literally, I just quoted your words. Wait, what? I'm saying this. When I say, where's the evidence for that? I've been agreeing with you so far. I know, but you just asked me now to pull, you pulled me up on what I was saying, to correct what I was saying, right? Because you thought I was talking about all the New Testament, whatever, you misunderstood me. Yeah, I'm I asked saying, you a question. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right, yes. Which is what I responded to. Okay, so either yeah. one of two positions you hold. Either yeah. one, it ends at verse 8, mm -hmm. or two, there was another ending which yes. has been lost. We don't yeah, have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That, well, we've already done this now. Both of those positions necessity, according to your views, uh -huh. that, that what we do have, verse 9 to 20, is not authentic. Probably. You would agree. Probably. But according to right. your view, this is probably the case. Right? Okay, yes, yes. Either Again, I don't know what. Well, well, can well, can you make the, the next point? It could be it was lift up because. It was assumed they already know and talked about that. Okay, and no need to add it in. Yeah, okay. That's, yeah. Do you agree with this argument? Think it's good? It's possible. Could be, yeah. Okay. No, but do you think it's probable? Not possible. Probable. I don't know if you could demonstrate it's probable. Because my problem with that, I'll tell you the problem why my issue is. Yeah. Saying that because it was such a commonly understood in the Gospel of Mark, they just missed it out. Okay, but what about the Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 1 through 18? That was a very commonly understood thing, you would understand. Okay. Many times. So why didn't they just omit that then? Because it was so understood. There's many things in the Bible which is so emphasized. The crucifixion, for example. Why didn't they just remove the crucifixion? I'm confused. Why are you arguing against the point I'm not making? No, no. Because you're, I'm doing I'm you doing against this point? Are you going to tell him to go away? You no, no. I'm just, I'm just wondering where you're going. Yeah, I'm responding to him. And okay, I'm that's gonna, fine. I'm, yeah. And I'm asking you, do you agree with him? You said that you are I say it's possible. So yeah. I want to show you yeah. that it's unprobable though. It's possible. Okay. Yeah, but I say it's possible. But you would agree that it's improbable though, right? His position? I don't know. Don't know. Okay. Okay. So what's your evidence for that position? Just common sense. How is it common sense? Because 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 say, uh, because saying that they, get, they, they didn't speak about the, the, the what they've seen empty to. Later on they did, and it was spoken why they didn't need to done an abrupt end like that because common. it was assumed they knew. I'll tell you why it's not common sense. If you're saying that they removed those 12 verses because it was so commonly taught they didn't need them, right? Then I can say the same thing. What about John chapter 1 verse 1 through 18? That was a commonly known thing. Why didn't they remove that as well? And what about the crucifixion? Why didn't they just remove that? We know well, about that. from that argument, well, why did they write the whole New Testament? They didn't that's need the to. Whole yeah. that's, that's my critique. That's, 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 that's a poor argument. I agree with that's poor argument. You just agreed with me. You just have an argument for me. Uh, I think it was some integrity uh, if you speak on this matter. Uh, the portion that the portion um, that we know that 
those verses on the phone in, in um, the original, those are the 12 verses. I mean, that's a, that's a point of most certainty that when they are the later on, that's interpolation and that's, that's a corruption. He, this point, respectfully, is, is point of most certainty. You saying probably and this thing, I'm listening, you are using hypothetical jump start words. This, this, this it doesn't really all know where it, because you could say this about maybe, probably, to get off any hook. I won't get off any hook, I'm what just I'm not saying, committed to a so view. So, why would I ask you, the, the lot of portion that you hold, yeah. um, because two of them cannot be simultaneous at the same time, that's what we're saying. And I'm sure that's what he's trying to find out to you. Say that again. The lot of portion that you hold, yeah, yeah. where's the evidence that you are Wait, wait, when you, when you say that you hold, Okay, the, I don't, the, I don't the, hold that the as... Longer, yeah. The missing part, where's yeah, your yeah. evidence for that? Like, what, what exactly is the missing part? Wait, where's the scripture where, evidence where, where for that? Why well, you mean uh, the longer version the of long, Mark? You're saying that there's two possibilities. One, that yeah. it ends at best A, but there's another position yeah. of learning to you that it could be the case that it goes longer, but it's just lost, right? Mm -hmm. So where's the evidence for that? What's, for that what yeah. would this content be? What would it be? What, what, what's the evidence for that belief? Yeah, what's the scripture um, evidence for I'm not aware. So you have no evidence for this Well, again, I'm not committed to these beliefs. Yeah, but you see, I don't think you quite understand it. There's a lot more robustness than you're willing to admit. No, no, but that's fine. That's what I'm trying to demonstrate What's to you. More I can have a very uh, relaxed approach to this because there could be many different ways that this could, could have played out. Again. I am not committed to any of those ways, word. so I don't need to argue for them. So which way do you deem is more probable then? It seems I don't know. To me like I, haven't, I haven't committed to a view. Okay. Is, the, is the view yeah. that it ends at verse 8? Do you believe this is any why, evidence? Why, why are you trying to like get blood out, blood out of a stone? No, I'm no, not committed no. to a view. Well, that's so you, stated, you just stated the two potential yeah. views, so you obviously No, are, the ones that I'm aware of that I think could be the case. Those two views, right? It could be more, I But those two views both <laughs> negate the potential of the best 9 through 20 we have today being right, authentic. Right, right. You agree with that, right? Yeah, my, my view is that the, the later ending is not is not um, authentic in the original. Yeah, that's Thank my God, view. Thank God, that's literally what I've been asking. I started, I started the very same thing saying regular. that. You said, oh, possible, possible. You never answered directly what you're believing. Yeah, yeah based, based on that. probabilities. Yeah, I'm bro, bro, bro. That's okay. so I can be wrong about that. No, no, that's that's my... Wrong. I'm not right, wrong about so that, that was the very thing I started with. I told you right at the beginning, that's my view. I said either... I said the longer ending, I don't think, is part of the original. It's possible there was another version that was part of the original, but now it's been lost. That's what I always said. Right, right at the very beginning. The the very beginning. So what about yeah. 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 Which is perfectly fine for a Christian worldview, because the Christian worldview does not hold to perfect textual so best, preservation. What, what You're aware of that. Can I, can I ask you that? Do you know that the Christian worldview does not hold to perfect textual preservation? What was that repeated again? The sir? Christian worldview does not hold to perfect textual preservation. No one said that. I'm understanding that. Ah, okay. So you understand that. And so you understand what does from my perspective. Mean? Textual preservation. What meaning? Meaning that you have the exact original in the exact text that it was originally written in. Okay. Now, where in, since you're a man of academia, where in academia wait, do what? they define? Oh, I, wait, wait, wait. I'm a man of academia. Didn't I start this conversation by telling you I didn't go to university and study this? You can study academia without going to university. And that makes me a man of academia. You're a man of interest. So I've never been in academia. No, no, no. But a man, I'm a man of academia. academia. Mean, mean I'm going to explain now to you. Reference what you mean. So you're, you're you using. Reference and you look into the web. Don't, don't, don't use cheap stuff like that. It's not cheap. What's cheap about it? Yeah, but I said, Matt, you're a man of academia. Well, I told you from the beginning, I haven't studied. I'm not going to say you're a man of ignorance. I'm going to say you're a man of knowledge. Well, just gonna, don't even say anything. Don't even say anything. Just make your point. Make your point. So right. you agree that that's corrupted. Now, out of curiosity, we're moving on there. So we've established Mark chapter 16, verse 9 through 20 is later edition. What does verse 8 say in Mark chapter 16? I don't know. Do you tell us the conclusion. Don't verbatim. Just give me the summary. What does verse no, 8 say? No, can you tell us? No problem. So the summary of it, you were left with saying the woman saw there was trem out trembling mm -hmm. and they ran away out of fear and they never told anybody. Mm -hmm. Now, is that the narrative of the other Gospels? I got, okay, do you believe the woman told anyone or no? Yeah, I believe that you can have verses in the gospel that are time sensitive. That's not the question I asked. I said to you, do you believe that the woman told other people? Yes. yes or no. Okay, so how come in verse 8 it said they never told, they ran away out yeah. of fear and they never told anyone? Exactly anybody. what I just told you, which I if you're listening, you'd understand. I, 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 I said it was time. Right, so that was the question you're asking then. It's time sensitive. That's the whole response I'm giving you. Well, I already know where you're going. No, no, okay. So, so okay. Uh, with respect, you, you, else, you know what you're saying. I know what I'm saying. Are we speaking? Right. If me and you okay. were speaking, we can go have a shisha and coffee and down there. Or if you want other people to do something about confidence, let's do subject now, because sometimes we get laughed. I don't understand what you're getting out of this. Is this just to affirm, like, what you know, what Bible scholarship has been for the last few hundred years? Or what's, no, what's, what's the point? I understand your position, actually. Multiple points. Okay. And I'm going to ask you about that. Well, all right. So are you just going to go through every single case no, 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 and then be like, what's, what's your the, opinion here? No, what's your opinion no, here? What's your opinion here? Finish. You'd know the answer to that, which would be that I'm not. Okay. So in Mark chapter 16, verse 8, it says they never told anybody. You said, oh, they're time sensitive. Okay. Do you believe this is proper simple? Before I ask the main question, do you believe this is a problematic? Did you just ask the main question? I really appreciate it. Because you're not asking the main question. Is problematic, yes or not? Well, it's problematic, no. What, what's, what's not problematic? The, the particular verse where the woman says that she did well, not. Well, she did end up. Right. Okay. How come the scribes didn't understand that? The scribes saw it as problematic. Okay. Why so is that So you're going against issue? the scribes? 
Well, scrubs so up you're, like saying, you're saying that verse 8 can be explained as saying, yes. oh, well, they can be harmonized because it's time sensitive. Yes. But the early writers of the Gospels, mm. the Gospel, they never understood it that way. Why? Because they added 12 verses to try and justify okay. it, to try and harmonize right. it. Right, so your view so is, you my view, the scribes, my, right? well, no, by all means, no. What I mean, though, is that it's possible for human beings to err. It's and possible. it's possible for human beings to have a variety of opinions. If you want to do this, you've just refuted the whole of Islam's early history. Again, jump into Islam. I know you want to jump to Islam. And I, I know well, no, it's because you're destroying your own faith by trying to hurt mine. That's what I find disingenuous. No, no, no. You hurt your own faith to try and hurt mine. So the Metazolites, they were early. They were totally wrong, right? Were they early scholars? Were they authoritative? There you are. You didn't escapism respectfully. Because when you bring the point, and you cannot read really I answered it. No, no, no. Yeah. And you cannot deal with it with certainty. Let's wait, have what, a, I wait, wait, certainty mm -hmm. is a very particular word. Hear what I'm saying, hear what right. I'm saying. Yeah. Certainty mm. of with scripture reference that this is that position. We have to have some integrity. You know, mm -hmm. all of us, we tend to be people of God. Yes, of God, absolutely. God absolutely. Integrity is important. Yes. Very much so. So that's why when you hold a portion about um, it only in a verse 8, uh -huh. that is a portion of certainty that the scholar holds to. We have nothing else. Mm -hmm. You understand? Well, I need to look up exactly what's going to say that, that particular verse. If I don't have the royal cup in my hand drinking right, I don't have it. <laughs> well, we not, none of us have the original the copies, copies right? You, none of us have the original copies. You, you say no, right. maybe I did have the cup and I lost it. That is not, that is not a statement of certainty. Well, for sure, I'm Ste telling you right now. Don't say statements of certainty. I, I have, no, no, no one ever seen me with that cup of, of King, jo King Charles and I never have that cup. Oh, that's not what you mean. I'm King just saying Charles, to you, what? I'm saying to you, when you use optical um, arguments, sometimes jumpstart keyword could be possible. Yeah. I see it as a way of trying to escape as a point of certainty on the country that has been. No, no, I'm, I'm open enough to admit that I am not certain about many things. Okay. In fact, I'm probable about so, like some things, many things in fact. But there are things I simply have to say, well, I'm aware here of the possible options. I myself am not committed to a one at this particular point. But Maybe I will be later on. But, you're too but I'm open enough to admit that. Remember, I asked ask about the gospel that I went in there. He's talking about preserve. Yeah. Um, What's a preserve relative to what are we saying preserve? What are you describing? Why, my understanding of preservation is that. For me, I'm focused on the message of Christ. Yeah, that is the message That's of Christ. What, That's yeah. what we focus on in the preservation of the Gospels. So you're saying in Marcus, yeah. there's one statement from Bart Herman that stands out to me. Or can we say we know what the word meant, but we don't know what the words are, meaning you don't have them. You don't have the words of well, Christ. Well, Bart is the same author that said that no major textual variance actually changes any major doctrines. And okay, and I actually emailed him about this. Because mm. he has a website, Bart Ehrman blog, you're yeah, aware of this, right? Yeah. And he actually changes position. Mm. He believes there are many yep. examples. For example, John, uh, John 7, verse sure. 3 to 8, verse 11. So if you're going to appeal to a position, he says in the end of misquoting Jesus, I know where he What major doctrine from. is that changing? No, no, I'm going to tell you. Just one second. I'm going to say, okay. just one second. Yeah. You just appealed to Bart Ehrman. Yep. So you're appealing to his position, uh, his book, yeah. negation, yeah, misquoting Jesus, right? Yep. Exactly. The end of misquoting Jesus is where he says this. Yep, if you thank take you. a look at Orthodox Scripture, Scripture, page 347, when he's talking about uh, Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1 through 18, the prologue, he says it's a later edition, and I, he actually uses in his article, Bat Ehrman blog, and he actually responded mm -hmm. to me on the same blog, mm -hmm. right? I can yep. get the reference so I can email it to you if you yep. want. Because it's like long ago, about a year ago, in a debate that I had regarding this. Yep. And he actually mentioned that there are many verses which have theological implications. For example, the Wait, Prolibia that's doctrine. not the same thing. Wait, well, the, wait, you're referring yes. to that as a major doctrine? He does, which you wait, appeal what? to him. Wait, what? Yeah. Okay, how is it a major doctrine? That's it, you can ask him that. Ah, uh, can ah, no, no, so you don't know. I'm telling you my issue. It doesn't, no, no. by the way. I'm telling you, just one second. Mm -hmm. just one second. Because of that's the claim. He's changing the argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, because no, 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 you've you just realized you don't know enough about no, this to talk about I don't, it. Just one second. Without okay. being arrogant, okay. right? Because okay. I was at the beginning of this discussion. Just like, within the beginning of this discussion, I asked you a simple question. You, you're ignorant. Mm -hmm. But I didn't insult you, so don't insult me. And I want to I'm more insulting more you. I'm insulting you. The point is this. He appealed to Bat M, saying that Bat M says, oh, that no. Because he has said that, yes. He said that, right? Yes. I'm telling you, if we're going to take him as an authority, let's take a look at his other words where he says that our variants which affect theology, he gives examples. Whether those examples, I agree with or not, it's not the point. I right. disagree with your usage of Batman, not the right. validity of Batman. Right. I disagree that your rep your um you're demonstrating, but uh, you're representing Bat Ehrman's view correctly. I believe that he had that view in, in Miss Yes, he did, because he put it in his own word. Yeah, yeah. in Jesus a very yes, long time ago when he for. debated Daniel Wallace. Daniel he actually Wallace, said many yes. times he debated Jesus' friends. view. Yeah, yeah. You're good friends, no problem. I hope mm. you're friends with uh, anyone. Mm. No, the guy on the tree, no mm. problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Right, so what major doctrine does it change? No, but the point, again, just one second. 
You're changing the goalposts. Why? You made it, my problem is. <laughs> Wasn't my whole point that it doesn't change your major doctrine. No, 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 now you can't tell me what major doctrine it changes. Now you can't tell me what major doctrine has changed. Yeah, of course it does. So the resurrection didn't happen. He, he thinks he Islam is like totally didn't. ahistorical. But he also says the resurrection didn't happen. Why? Because his methodology. Pre yeah. You believe Bat Emin believes in the resurrection? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Crucifixion. Sorry, I thought you were saying crucifixion. My bad. But he does believe in the crucifixion. What's the commonality in his methodology? No, but he said I am. No, but you're presupposing. You're gonna say Pontius Pilate and Christ. First of all, you're presupposing the words attributed to Jesus in John is reliable. Can you prove the words attributed to Jesus in John is reliable? Can you? Okay. I don't agree that he said I am. What's your evidence he said I am? No, but in the why should I believe in the Bible? Yeah, Okay, I'm gonna speak to you later. I'm gonna go tomorrow to speak to you. Listen, don't you respect? Don't speak. Well, to be fair, you saying that you don't think he said that is very different from an agnostic position. What's the evidence? No, no, from an agnostic yeah. position. I so if you're agree. consistent, I don't agree with your attribution. To, okay. He came in and said, Jesus said, I am. I right, am. That's fine. You can, you can say you are. Evidence? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. But my point is, is what? Wait, wait. Okay, one second. One second. One second. My point is that if you, you can't simply say, well, no, that didn't happen because there's no evidence for it. Rather, the correct position is that you're agnostic about whether it happened or no. not. Do you understand? And if you think he didn't say that, then you yeah. need to give I'll the evidence. Tell you why. First of all, there's yes. a lack of evidence mm -hmm. to attest to the claim uh -huh. that he said that. Does that negate the claim? No, it's, but it justifies me in saying I don't accept that. I reject this attribution. That's fine. Yes. Okay, and but I you, said can't I say, you can't say the opposite though. I don't believe it happened. I don't see evidence that it happened. Wait, wait. No, you're equating those two. Well, equating which two? Right. So absence of something doesn't mean the negation is true. That's fine. But it can. Right. Okay. So you want But it can. Okay. And I give yeah. it from sounds. I know what you're you saying. Sh you should just say Evid I am okay. an okay. to it. Absence of evidence is not evidence for absence. You can say that. But at the same time, though, it can be the case that. An absence of evidence can be evidence of absence. It can be the case. But it yeah, there are, there are cases yeah. where it can be. Exactly. Right, yeah. Yeah. So I don't believe that fallacy is applicable to what I just said. I don't believe that's. I believe that's not applicable. No, my whole point was that you were saying there is no evidence of it. You don't accept the Bible account as being reliable. Therefore, he did not say it. I'm saying that doesn't follow logically. If we, how do you know he said it? When we talk about no, 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 I'm going to answer you. I'm answering. Do you want an answer? Or okay, all right, fine. I'll let, I'll, let you, I'll, let you, I'll let you go. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Chris. So when he makes a claim that Jesus said, I am, I'm going to say, no, where's your evidence for that? I reject that. I don't reject that attribution. Where's your evidence? Bring me the evidence until you bring me the evidence, which by the way, he lacked to do, right? Why should I accept it? I reject this attribution. Right? Okay, but you're example, agnostic about example, it then. For, no, no, just one second. Okay. Just one second. If it's the case, what? According to what? According to the Gospel of John, no problem. According to the Gospel of John, that's fine. What's, what's but the whole problem is, yeah. okay. yeah, first yeah, of all, if problem. I'm going to speak, mm -hmm. okay, I don't want to be insulted, go, go, it's very go, go, hard. Go. No one's insulting you. I'm speaking to three yeah. people. It's like the Trinity of Christian debaters. Can you just chill out no, a little bit? No, the, the Trinity is not three different beings. It's it three the different beings. At least the three gods. I the Quran says so. Gods are does the Quran say the Trinity yeah, is three gods? Yeah, I have at least the three gods. Does, does the Quran say the Trinity is three gods? Is your authority the Quran? No, is it yours? 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 Because the Quran is from God, is it not? Okay, so your Quran gets it wrong. No Christian has ever thought the Trinity is Allah, Jesus, and Mary as two separate gods. The Quran is wrong. He brought it up. You see, the statement about um, whether Jesus is I am or not, there's multiple, multiple problems there. And then you, just, so you, have to, you have to validate scripture first. Yes. To, to, Before we interpret it. Yes. You have to, you have to validate it to be um, re, um, relatively be in the world of Jesus. And this is why it's imperative to also know from certainty. Because we can't have a. So uh, no let, 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 let me finish what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, We can't have a dubious input. Mm. Yeah, that we don't ever show if Jesus speak Greek. We we, we pontify now, which are the patch up and generally say this time. Well, most most well, general, uh, scholarship is generally. Isn't that certain, it's, sir? You know, in scholarship, certain. it's actually more of a question if he if he knew Hebrew. Interesting. Yeah. There's no much. They all they all accept a new Aramaic. Which scholar says it's certainly, certainty? I'm sure. I'm not talking about any certainty, bro. We all don't. Yeah, but you keep saying it. Yeah, but I'm telling you why I say that. If you listen to the Okay. In the, and that input right there, where well, you don't certainly speak Cornet Greek. Yes? But then you're gonna have an output conclusion of certainty about a message or a junction that is in Cornet Greek. I'm not assuming certainty. I said, so the, like, uh, possibly I am, I am, in this case. that same that Christ is, I am, yeah. that's in Cornet Greek. That's yeah, the sure. last language it goes back to. Uh, yeah, sure. Not to Aramaic. Well, I mean, in a written form, yeah. Yeah, but we know that, we know that the, the, the scholars them, and the, they can say for sure, they should have spoke Aramaic. Nobody can test that. Yeah, but that's, that's, that's certainty. Like, you know, can you prove I'm to me saying, the sun will rise tomorrow? I'm saying, my, my point I'm, is, is that no, no, I'm you need to, you. to use good standards you, for knowing I'm things. To you. They, they say for sure he spoke Aramaic. Nobody can test that though. 
that Quest book or Well, yeah, no one can test anything in history, really. No, no, I'm you not can, about, you I'm can, about, You can have no, evidence no, for no, points, no, no, but no, you can't go back no, and no, literally no, experience no, it, right? I'm talking about a specific point. Unless you have a time machine. Well, I, I, I want to come back. You can't realize, experience it. You do not realize it. I'm talking no. about a specific point. None of them can test that Christ spoke Aramaic. They have asserted that he spoke Aramaic. I'm talking about that specific point. Do you agree with that position? It's incredibly highly likely he spoke Aramaic, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, when you have a statement on I am yeah. in Greek, that's one argument right. that you have to look into to validate this is actually a message from Christ. The next point, the next point now, yeah. charitable. Even if Christ did say that and he translated it into Greek, yeah. context does matter. Yeah, is he yeah. claiming to be God like when Moses says, mm. um, 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 when God says Moses, I am? Mm. Because if you look in the Septuagint, mm. in Greek, the, the scribe mm. express it differently. Mm. Ego, him, and Owen. So I would be of the view yes. that in John chapter 8, the stronger argument to be made is when Jesus talks about how Abraham saw his day and was glad. And in John 1, the very same author writing this, says that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. That seems to tie back very well with Genesis 15, where Abraham saw the Word of the Lord. So it seems that Jesus is referring to that. No, but I'm saying that... Get up to what's No, no, but... That, 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 I think is a stronger argument from my point of view. I'm saying the context does matter. Even, yes, that even, is context, In John 8, a couple of verses before, it is a clear, just put clear distinction between him and the Father. Yeah, we don't think that Jesus yes. is the Father. Yes, you, you can't be a Christian and think that Jesus is the Father. But we show 100% the Father is God. Yeah. Yes, the Father is God. He's described as many places as being God. Okay. Like Jesus, for example. So to put a clear distinction between him yeah. and the Father in John 8, yep. um, later on, when to say, I am, uh -huh. um, that doesn't make him God. You look at the context. He does, he's not claiming to be God. Because, like I said to you, in the Septuagint, the scribe in the Septuagint mm. expressed two different when, when when God says, I am to Moses, and when just says, I am. They put two different expressions to this guy, two different magnitude. They don't mean the same thing. No, okay. Well, again, to prove Jesus' divinity, I wouldn't even go to that place anyway. There's plenty of other places. Yeah, but I'm going to show you the describe the Septuagint and the same thing scribe. Yeah. They don't believe that Jesus I am that make him a divine, that Moses, the God of Moses. Because uh, sure. they themselves, in their writing, express the difference. I'll check it out. Yes. So, mm. unless you're going to argue. But again, for Jesus' divinity, I would not go there. There are stronger places where Jesus affirms his divinity. Yeah, we, like, we, 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 that's what we would go we, to. I want to know, I want to know where, 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 where. Where are those stronger places? Hmm? Where are those stronger places? Okay, so Jesus says in John 14, 13 and 14 that when he goes to the Father, you can pray to Jesus in his name and he will answer your prayers. Is prayer something that only God can do? We also know that, we also know that this is also, um, if you ask the Father in my name, um, it's also a little addition. <laughs> okay, but, but ignoring all that, but ignoring all that, YouTube, there's, there's, my, my point is, is yeah, 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 but my point yeah, is, according right, to our understanding, is Jesus divine? But I'm saying, you know what I'm saying now? You bring, you bring, you bring, you bring an argument forward. The answer forward. is yes, by the way. According to Mark's gospel, absolutely. You bring an argument evidence. forward. You well, bring Mark's gospel? No evidence for that. What, what about Jesus the very beginning where he's called the Son of Mark God? Mark chapter 1, verse 1, 3, where, okay. Yeah. Being called the Son of God is not an evidence. For example, Luke chapter 3, verse 38, Adam's also called the Son of God. There are many sons of God, but Jesus yeah, so, in John chapter 10, yeah. verse 37 it, almost explains how he's uniquely the no. Son of God in the way that he he's preeminent. He just switched it from Mark's gospel to John's gospel. Not, look at, because our scripture is holistic. Our scripture is holistic. which doesn't show his divinity, he has to jump to John. Wait, wait, wait. That same. Wait, wait, wait. Is, is the same term Samaria. used in Mark as well as John? Yeah, but the intention okay. of Mark is so the same as John. Okay, so both authors describe Jesus as the Son of God. Yeah, and also okay. Luke's gospel so John then the expand what the well. Son of God means in chapter 10? In John, we can yes. verify that. There you go then. John is a, okay, we look at scripture all, holistically, he doesn't want to do that. Wait, we can talk, okay, just one second. First of all, your evidence that Mark... Your evidence, wait, wait, so his evidence that... Wait, wait, akhi, akhi, billah, alayk, one second. His evidence that Mark believed Jesus was God was that Mark calls him Son of God. But then the evidence that Son of God means he's divine because he goes to the gospel of John. What about about John? What about about Mark? 1642. Which way reference Daniel chapter 7, right? Verse 13. Well, my point, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 I believe yeah, yeah. so. That's but my, my point is, how did the Jews respond to it? No, but in verse 27. How did the Jews respond to it? Very easy. So it says, This one will be given the kingdom of heaven uh -huh. and all glory be with him. Yeah. Take a look at Daniel chapter 7, verse 27, where it also says, This same glory and give will give it okay. be given to the Holy One. Talk about the Jews at the time. No, 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 no. The Jews, no, no, seven, don't we have to look at the read the next verse. What does the next verse say? What does the next verse say? It says that the Jews thought he was being blasphemous by claiming this. You find the same thing in Matthew 26. It's the I same thing, Jesus. It's the same thing. So are you talking John 10, 30? What about uh, Mark 2? Yeah, Mark chapter 2. No problem. Why, he, come, he heals the paralytic man. He, he claims to be the... Um, oh, where's it now? The Lord, <laughs> the Lord of the Sabbath. I can respond to that. So wait, okay, really, no, go on. Yeah, but, yeah but, but, but there's a difference between responding to something and actually answer, making I've a convincing answered, argument. I can make an argument against this, but I don't no, want to take the first one. But these are huge. No, no, no. It's difficult. Do you understand how I can keep rolling these out again and again? You know, Isaiah, we talked about Isaiah 3, verse 3, Malachi 3, 1. Yep. Okay, the Lord coming to his temple. Okay, what's your response to that? Yeah, the one who paves the way for the Lord uh -huh. in the Old Testament. Who is the one that paved the way? 
To welcome God's representative was to welcome God. In chapter 9, verse 37 or 39. You can, I can pull it up if you want. I got my phone on me now. Yeah. So in Mark chapter 9, verse, uh, Mark chapter 9, it tells us to welcome God's representative is to welcome God. We can apply the same principle of agency established here in Mark chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. The one who so you paved, hold the agency theory? Just one second. Just okay. one second, please. Yeah. The one, likewise, the mm. one who paved the way for God's representative paved the way for God, right? It doesn't mean the Lord's representative is God himself. Likewise, in Mark chapter 9. So the, the flaw in that reasoning is that there's a very distinct kind of way that you're paving the way for the Lord to come to his temple. This is a very specific, it's not a general form of, no. oh, well, a prophet is just generally preparing things. So no, he's preparing the way for Yahweh to arrive at his temple. temple. Yes, what temple? which is fulfilled according to Mark in the coming of Jesus That's with right. John the Baptist prepared Again, for him. Again, so Jesus Yahweh has been described as who? Yahweh. 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 Where references is that? That's Mark 1. Mark I'm referring to one, one. Yeah. Isaiah 40 verse 3, Malachi 3, 1. I mean, Mark 1 quotes these. Mark thing, quoted... Um, yeah. Sorry, what? Mark quoted Isaiah, you say? Yes, Isaiah 43. All you know, all you know directly that Mark is quoting Isaiah. Because he quotes it. I don't know what you mean by Mark, that. Well, he actually makes an, Mark, error, he makes an error, by the way. He makes an error, by the way. It depends on what kind of quote you're trying to do. No, he makes an error. Right, you said... Well, paraphrase Yeah, because he, you know, he says, as written in Isaiah, and then he goes and quotes Malachi and Isaiah. What the, that's not, Malachi's no, no, not Isaiah. It's He's probably just relaying it to no, no, yeah, but you say again, you have to be like, no, that's definitely an error. What criteria are you You're using? Saying, no, it's oh, not no, an whatever. Okay, on the apparent, it's an error. So the burden's upon you to show that the apparent is false. On the apparent, he says in Isaiah it is written, and then he goes and quotes Malachi. I'm sorry, but the apparent is that that's an error, and then you can provide evidence. No, of course not. Of course not. You would have to know the historical context so and whether or not that was a familiar okay, well, way of referring well, to the scripture. I understand. The Mark, well, I think the Bible is an example. Give me an example. Of a <laughs> that's the whole point. Give me an example. Give me another example where it does the same thing. There are many different types of prophecies that are referenced, not directly. No, Absolutely. I never said the direct prophecy. I never you did, said you that. literally I did. You said, wait, wait, it quotes, no. it quotes one, but not the other. No, that's not what I said. Yeah, wait, well, no, it's no, what no, you no, said. You said it was, so, well, so, you said it was 40 and 3 in Malachi 3 ago, 1, you, but it only quotes one of them. No. Does it only quote one of them? So, once you Does it quote one of them? I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand. You won't answer. I'm trying to understand something, I'm trying to answer you, but I'm Does it quote one of them? I want to about Isaiah exactly. point. Does it quote one of them? First of all, it quotes one okay. of them, but that's okay, not what Okay, thank you. So that was the one answer. That's not the one he says. No, no. Right, okay. So that's my whole point. What I'm saying, though, is there are other parts in, in Scripture as, where it quotes old prophecies. As, I can't think of one of them. But I'm aware of them. I know. I'm not a living dictionary. I'm not Samson Moon. So what I'm saying is that there are many parts of Scripture where it quotes old Scripture, but it does not quote them directly, but rather it paraphrases them. You know that's there. You're saying that it's a Scripture, but you are you're just pretending saying, to be angry. Uh, no, 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 no. When Jesus quoted Old Testament, yeah. just always give an indicator. Is he there said it was written? Are he there uttered the prophet, the previous prophet name or tried? Like for example, when he quoted I, um, Isaiah 29 verse 13, just as Isaiah was right about you, you hypocrite. This is just always give an indicator. Mm. He there said it is written so we know it's something of the past. Or he mentioned the name of the previous prophet. Mark didn't do that. So he said Mark didn't, is not fallen. Mark, the author of Mark, alleged quote unquote disciple. Hold well, on for a second, let's not do that, my friend. Yep. Sorry. Did not follow in the teacher Jesus the way that he quoted the, the previous scripture. So the question is no, not because if two statements is similar or identical, that is not a first and proof that the person is quoting another person. You said so many things right here. Okay, can I respond to this? Give me my two points. Yeah, for, yes. And I'm allowing this. You said so many things right here. That, I, can, that I've, I found similar to people that are Christian in the 60s that I spoke to before that you never met in your life. Okay. Does it mean you're quoting from them? Right. So okay. what the evidence that Mark is quoting Isaiah? Okay. Generally speaking, if you assume in the historical context that the Jews were familiar with Old Testament texts, that when you find something that funny enough matches in, in theme, in, in style and in reference, then you will be like, okay, that seems to be reasonable to say that is either a paraphrase of that 
or a direct quote, depending on what the others are trying to do. Okay. Yeah. Now, you said, but Mark changes his way of doing it. I think Mark has the uh, literary freedom to do that. Okay, fine. And that's absolutely so, fine. So, conquer his approach. Yeah. You said Mark quote Isaiah, yeah. and that indicated that Jesus is God, Yahweh. In the context of yeah. him explaining that John the Baptist is that person, he was that and messenger, Jesus and Yahweh. Jesus is Yahweh coming to the temple. Yeah. So, you're saying, so you're saying that means Isaiah that he quoted mm -hmm. would be sharing and presenting that same sentiment, that Jesus is Yahweh in Isaiah. How is that possible? How, how would Isaiah know? Your evidence for saying Jesus is God on Yahweh, you quoted what Ma Mark's Mark... Isaiah was born hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus. Right, so he doesn't need you're, to share the same thing at listen, all. Listen, are you listening to what I'm saying to you? Okay. It's your evidence that I'm using, and I'm agreeing with your evidence for a second. Yeah. To make you see, to make you see what's going to happen. You, 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 you quoted Mark, mm. quoting Isaiah, mm -hmm. to prove what, in the, at the end of it, that Jesus is Yahweh, don't you? That's the end, that's the end goal. Mm -hmm. That's why you do that, to prove that. Mm -hmm. So that means in the same Isaiah, um, it, it, it must have meant in that verse that it's talking about Jesus as Yahweh. I think it's possible to have more than one meaning. If it's not talking about Jesus as, uh, uh, as Yahweh in, in Isaiah, would then, then the quotation is irrelevant, makes no sense to, to indicate that Jesus. No, you can have it referred to many things. So for example, it could be a prophecy about the coming Messiah. It can also be Let a text that is relevant to the people at the time to indicate make it very uh, a, a preparation for looking make, for the make, Messiah. Make it very simple. It's very simple. simple. Make it very yeah. simple. Is Isaiah. Okay? <laughs> no, no, because no, you can understand me simple. Yeah. I do. Want to please respect me. I want to ask some questions about Islam. No, you must not respect me. Because we've been talking about Christianity for a long time. I don't know where you're about to go. We can do that, but we have to read because I listen. Okay, so we can be going on that now. No, 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 no. Otherwise, it's going to go. Why are you scared of so much? I know, but can I ask a question? Because it's going to go soon. And I can talk to you after. I told him an hour ago he can ask questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he hasn't got much time. But you cannot say that no one ever refutes that you're wrong. When you don't let someone refute your point when I'm presenting it. I don't let someone and refute so, my point. I respect for Well, I mean, I would no, be a poor apologist if I didn't. If no, I, if I let saying. people refute my point when I say no, it. Respectful. So. Let me finish your point. Respectfully. Yeah. Because I like to dumb things down no. until people get it like a child. No. Okay. 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 All right. So Isaiah. Final thing now, because yes. I want to move on. Yes. So he's Isaiah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The reference that is quoting. Yeah. That, that, that Mark quote later on. Yeah. Okay. You said Mark quote that Isaiah mm -hmm. to prove that Jesus is Yahweh is mm -hmm. the God. Yeah, yeah, that was his point. So that means when he presented the same statement that Mark gonna quote later on, yeah. he has to be presenting the same thing. If he, if Isaiah from Isaiah is to present that someone else is the God, then Mark quoting it was wrong. Is wrong to prove Jesus is God because Isaiah's intention is he is the God when Isaiah quotes. Yes. Yeah. Say so you Jesus. Isaiah intended is he is the God. I am Mark. I'm quoting this note to prove you is the God. You different from him. How long do you have left, by the way? Huh? How long do you have left? I literally, okay. Well, today I came today. We have multiple things. I came to speak for like an hour. I want to go to the. We were the multiple things I want to do. Do another time, okay. Can I talk, can I talk with him real quick before he has to go? We can speak about the okay. Preservation. Thank you. That'll be really good. I, I think it's good because we're keeping the same theme. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. 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 There's two yeah. topics. And yeah. either, we, either we can discuss Tawhid or we can stick on the topic and stick on the preservation. That's fine. Preservation. Okay. Because this is a time thing, right? No, because you put the something. Yeah. And you are you. You don't want to stand by your claim, and I'm trying to. I am standing by my claim. It's illogical to me your claim. Okay, well, that's, that's your opinion, my friend. No, because no, because uh, we we speak in English language, and we we're so okay. human. We listen right. carefully. I, I give respect of this to what you're saying. I if you disagree with me, tell me later when I've had a lovely conversation yeah, with this gentleman. Good, yeah, yeah? Please, that yeah, way. He's gonna go. He puts it to the point. No, that's why. That's why when I chat with him now, if he's gonna go soon. Okay, you can come back to me, and you can tell me your point afterwards. Yeah, I promise you, I'll listen to your point. I just want to present the point that Mark to say Mark is because the point is Mark did not quote Isaiah. It's all pontifying okay, okay, yeah. and conjecture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no evidence. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's my no, point. Yeah, that's no evidence. Right. I think that was the right. initial so question. Question. Okay, thank you. Let's, let's, okay, so what do you think the Quran is perfectly preserved textually? Uh, happy you. I was going to ask this question. I was waiting for this thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so what do you mean by perfect preservation? Of the text. So you have the exact same text in terms of uh, what was revealed to Muhammad. That has been preserved textually since it was written down and there's been no changes, no additions, no subtractions. And so okay, and that goes back to my... Uh, I'm going to answer this. a good point actually, the last point. That goes back to my initial understanding of Corruption being an additional omission by someone other than the author. Because we know in the Quran, for example, in chapter 2, verse 106, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what? Abrogation. He tells us. Yeah, exactly. SubhanAllah, abrogation. So we've already established the principle of abrogation. This is fine. Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this different type of abrogation, but to keep it simple, abrogated from the text, right? We know very clearly that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to abrogate something from the text, this would not be corruption because the author himself, according to our belief, which is given in the town, whatever, 
It's Allah, so you can do that. That's not corruption. That's not However, if it's the case that, for example, Ibn Mas'ud or Bay Ibn Ka'ab, which I know your arguments about those people, is, which I'm happy to go into as well. If they were, for example, to corrupt it or whatever, uh, then this would be corruption, absolutely. If you want to talk about Bay Ibn Ka'ab or um, Ibn Mas'ud, we can talk about that as well. Okay, are they valid Qurans, Ubay Ibn Ka'ab's codex and Abdul Ibn Mas'ud's codex? Qurans codex, right, codices. codices. Well, they held it. Valid if it's a codex, it's a written Quran, right? Yeah, it's a Mus'haf. Yeah, no yeah Mus'haf. Mus'haf yeah, containing the Quran. Physical, yeah. Yeah. No problem. Yeah, that's fine. So what do you mean by, is it valid? Sorry. Is it a Qur'an? Is it a Qur'an? Yeah. yeah. It is a Qur'an, even though there are differences in them. No. Okay. That's the point. I'm going to tell you why. So when we have Ibn Mas'ud, mm -hmm. make your case by Ibn Mas'ud, then, then we can talk about Ibn Ka'ab. Because Ibn, right. Ibn Mas'ud, you're going to say he rejected the Fatiha uh -huh. and the last two surahs. Surah Al-Nas, so Surah yeah. Surah Al-Nas, I think Ikhlas is your point as well, you say, right? And uh, then no, no, Ikhlas is 112, so, uh, right? Al-Nas uh, yeah, is 114. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's 113. I can't remember the name of 113, but it's 113. Now? Nas is, yeah, 114. Yeah, yeah, so well, Nas, Nas is the one before that, and then Surah Al-Fatiha. And Fatiha as well. Yeah. Based off of what? Based off of what? Yeah. Based off the, there are Muslim writings that talk about how Abdullah ibn Masood had a different codex. Such as? Um, I can't Suyuti, tell you the, Suyuti? I can't, I can tell you. so I think Al-Tabari had in his writings. Tabari. Yeah, Al-Tabari. Where in his writings? Somewhere. Not in his tafsir, but in his history, history of Al-Tabari. Yeah, well, I know, I know. I, know. I, I can't tell you chapter and verse, but history of Al-Tabari. Can I give the reference? Also, I'm not sure if history okay, of Al-Tabari is like mention, fully translated okay. from Arabic. No, I think there's a small portion of it translated, but I don't yeah, think yeah. the entirety. Same with Fatih yeah. al-Bari by Ibn Hajar al-Qalani. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so first of all, I'm valid in asking for evidence for this claim, right? I'll quote scholars, by the way. I'll quote scholars. Gabriel Reynolds, for example. Gabriel Reynolds, who the hell is it? I'm talking, Gabriel okay. Reynolds? With all due respect, when we talk about our authorities, we're not going to some random okay. American... Uh, Dr. Haytham Sidki. No, no, okay. Haytham Sidki. We yep. got it in Masoud? Yeah. Show me what he says in Masoud. Well, I'm just saying... If Haytham, you're no, 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 no. Show me what, what Haytham Sidki says What I'm says saying is... There was, Haytham Sidki. Okay, would Haytham Sidki agree or disagree with what I'm saying? You need to bring the evidence he agrees. I okay, I'm telling you he would do. I've, I've multiple, I'm telling you he would do. I've seen multiple yeah. works and I've, studied, I've read yeah. also in academia. So Dr. Haytham Sidki looks into read? the tran uh, transitions of certain Qur'ans. the text and he talks, yeah, yeah the Qur'an. Right, so he yeah. also is familiar of other trans uh, translation, uh, tra translation, transmission variants. And he, so for example, the ones from Abdullah ibn Masood. Do we move on to so for example, Surah 5, I-98. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah Never mind, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, yeah, 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 <coughs> go on. Listen. <coughs> but my but point is that they're aware of these things. We can quote Masoud other scholars if you want. No, no, but, but Ibn Mas'ud is yeah. important. Yeah. Why? So Ibn Mas'ud, according to you, rejected uh, Al Fatiha yeah. and Nas and Surah uh, yeah. Surah yeah. Surah Surah As not actual right? of the Quran, Surah, but okay. as Dua so, yeah, supplementation. You, as the you appeal to Haytham Sidki as an example. Yeah, Give I can do all this. As well. Haytham Sidki, says I don't need to. You don't need to? Of course I don't. Okay. What well, do no I need problem. to know? The book? No, no, no. The verse? The, the, I, what do you want me to do? I'm telling you. I've, okay, I'm tell, okay. I'll give you another me scholar. No, no, let me just I'll give you another what? scholar. No, 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 Dr. Shady no, no, Nasser. That's another scholar. Okay, so that's two. That's two. No, 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 no. Okay, Dr. Uh, Yasser Khadi. Uh, How about him? You don't like him? So that's three. Okay, so Sean W. Anthony. Sean W. Anthony. Sean W. Anthony wrote a paper about this specific topic. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, let me let me let me just answer you. I want to answer you. I want to answer you. Sean W. Anthony wrote a paper explicitly talking about how the early Ummah, the early community of Islam used to take the additional surahs, this is the additional ones, not Abdullah ibn Masood, but he talked about... Uh, yeah, Obey Ibn Ka'ab. He talked that they took them as authoritative and use, used in prayers respect, at the mosque. To Obey Ibn Ka'ab. Let's deal with um, Ibn Mas'ud yeah, yeah. because Obey Ibn Ka'ab, the claim is different. The claim is that he added two extra surahs. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's all to do with textual corruption. Yeah, yeah, that's <clears> just fine. But Obey Ibn Ka'ab's case is different, right? We can explain it as, I'm sure you already know the explanations, for example, that and we have authentic hadith as well, in which it tells us what, that those two which you claim to be surahs was actually just du'at from uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we can get to Obey Ibn Ka'ab and that quote unquote Yeah, but there's a difference in but first of all, yeah, no, it's no problem if you can provide that, that's fine. But I'm telling you, we have the authentic hadith. With all due respect, yeah. if you're going to say to me we have a difference of opinion, <coughs> I'm going to say no, if it's about an Islamic position. We have an authentic hadith which directly tells us, mm -hmm. with all due respect, your your opinion or whatever, scholars, is out the window. Wait, what? So yeah, you're going to say Sunnah, which has uh, its own problems? Sunnah, yeah. yeah sunnah over scholars. Okay, if it comes to Islam, if you're going to quote someone like Yasir Qadi, who's a yes. heretic, by the way, not an authority. He's, it, it is he study? Who's not an authority. Is he, does he have a PhD? Is he, he in what, academia? What does he have a PhD Is he in academia? A PhD in what? Did he not peer a review PhD in what? Dr. Uh, a PhD, Daniel Brubaker? A PhD in what? Islamic studies. What's he got? And he's got a PhD in Islamic studies. I believe so. He believes so. Yeah. I believe he spoke to Muhammad Hijab. Which one? I believe he got that wrong. Or who else Maybe, was I don't it? know. No, I think you mentioned this point to Muhammad Hijab before, and I believe that you oh, looked what, at it. Oh, what, peer review Daniel Brubaker? No, 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 no. Yeah, the peer review agreed upon, because Daniel Brubaker, yeah, yeah, and it's not just him, it's also 
to Haytham they go City. they go to the same yeah, university. Haytham I think. City. Yeah, yeah, they respond. Yeah, to, he's teaches yeah, there. Daniel Brubeck yeah. has been responded to by Haytham City. I'm not City, I'm not making right? I'm not making his point. No, no, I'm just sorry, saying I'm, it's a reference yeah. to the fact that yeah, he's in scholarship. You know, yeah. Daniel Brubeck made a book, or whatever. It's been responded to by many yeah, people by right? an academic called yeah. Dr. Yasakadi about textual but corruption. Yeah, but it doesn't mean just because right. he wrote a peer review, it doesn't mean he's an academic. He's an authority to us Muslims in this. But he's literally peer reviewing about textual corruption. That doesn't mean he's an authority. Okay, I can make a peer review. Anyone can make a peer review. Wait, if you're a university and you're teaching. For what? For what? I believe it's Islamic studies. What's your evidence? Uh, as far Should as we go I Google it? Should we go Google it? When you spoke this to is so pointless, man. But the point is, Ibn Mas'ud, where's the reference is the point? Because my I'm issue not sure is what the Quran. Ibn Mas'ud, according to you, rejected Al Fatiha. He rejected Al Nas. And the 113. So, if we reject it, no, no, but where's the evidence? No, no, but the important thing is because we know that Ibn Mas'ud went through. Ibn Mas'ud went through with the. the he was an authority, why? Because he, there's chains of... Oh, shut up, GBT. No, I'm old school. This is a problem, but we don't accept it as the truth. You can take an applicable contact approach and show the argument also. No, no, no. The problem is the one that received the Quran. He's the prophet. Listen, Chris. It does says he... Yeah, university, uh, where guys, masters and PhD. No, it doesn't go into detail about what it is. But oh, yeah. yeah, but my point is, is that he is a valid person to bring up. No, no, no. You don't have any reason for that. You have no reason for that at all. At all. What does he indicate a different coin? I sometimes understand what Okay, his claim is that, uh, that uh, Ibn Mas'ud rejected Al Fatih, Al Fatih, and Nas, and the 113 yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. One of your evidences for this, I don't mind moving on, but I want to press you on this point. He mentioned Haytham Sidki. I've read Haytham yeah. Sidki's uh, on academia, his published work, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And also his response to Daniel Brubaker. He also has multiple, um, very, very big, multiple yeah, videos explaining. In it, right? You've mm -hmm. watched them. So I want to know where does Haytham Sidki said Ibn Mas'ud rejected these three surahs of the Quran? Please, that's all. If you accept I, he doesn't listen, say listen, that, listen, listen to me. On. I am talking about Dr. Haytham Sidki as a person. He is aware of the classical Islamic um, sources, which I believe, I already gave you one, Al Talburi, the history of Al Talburi, mentions the fact that there is known to be variant, uh, to be variant in the stories that are recited by uh, Abdullah ibn Masud. We even know this. We know the whole story about this. We know, we know that Uthman, Uthman had a problem with Abdullah ibn Masud. There's even a whole Shia tradition about it. Like, like, come on. The, yeah, but my point is, is that I'm not saying it has to be. What I'm saying though is that it's a known tradition. I think he means Ibn Thabit. Ibn Thabit himself, or Ibn Mas'ud actually had issues with Ibn Thabit. It's not, I don't think it's no, no, Uthman, yeah, yeah. No, Uthman, Uthman had issues with Abdullah ibn Masud because Abdullah, Abdullah ibn Masud's codex was still being used in, in, uh, in Basra, in Kufa. Okay, just, yeah, yeah, the issue with that. Right, so you know this. No, no, no. You yeah. I'm going to say, no, no, one second. The issue was what? I don't know what's the hearing, what's the charge? Ibn was jealous of Zaybin Thabit. He was, right? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> That's the truth. You misunderstood yes, yes, with yes, Uthman yes. bin Affan and uh, Zaybin Thabit and Ibn Mas'ud. You mixed the names up. It's not that. Ibn Mas'ud was jealous of Zaybin Thabit. Why? Because Uthman bin Affan chose Zaybin Thabit to head the committee when compiling right, the right, Quran right. after Amr ibn Khattab. Yeah, so I'm, not I'm not talking about that. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't. Uh, no, no, I am talking about specifically Uthman had issue with Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Have because issue. Abdullah, did, did Uthman not command any other Quran other than his what ministry? Is no problem. Is and this, right, was Abdullah ibn Masud a different Quran? Let me explain to you first. I'm going to tell you why it doesn't work for you, right? Because Abdullah don't know what they're speaking about. Like, the reason that doesn't work, work for you is because, do you know about the Ten Qur'ats, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, According to our tradition, but you accept the, 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 we have Ten Qur'ats, yeah? Where's the Sadat Nasun? I'm going to tell you what? Where's the Sadat Nasun? Yeah, it doesn't say. Don't tell you speak then, you want to give the man. Do you know what the Qur'ats are? Yeah. We're going to go into what the Qur'ats are. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be too long, realistically. We believe it's just summarized. Well, you don't know what the Ahruf is. No, uh, it's a lot. No, no, no. The Ahruf? Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, no. So, the tell Ahruf, I'm going to tell you, but I don't want to debate from. Okay, I'm going to answer you. I don't he mind. Know. Oh, no, what's a variant, though? You want to know what you're telling me? Doesn't know. I don't know what's a variant. I don't mind answering you, but I don't want to deviate from Ibn Mas'ud allegedly rejecting the Quran. That's a very big claim. I well, he also had changes in his Quran. No, such as? Uh, Surah Al Maida, I am 98. Okay, oh, 89, I think. Let me check. Okay, first of all, this has been described in the manuscript. Ibn Kathir. Where's the in where's his tafsir. evidence? Ibn Kathir in his tafsir wrote about how it was known that both in Ubay ibn Kab and Abdullah ibn Masud they had a variant of Surah Maida, Ayah 89 I believe well, it is, where he has a different a word in Arabic in his Quran. Chris, Chris, I'm just going to explain to you. In Islam, mm -hmm. you can appeal to a scholar, a great scholar for example, right? Like at tabari Ibn mm -hmm. Kathir. But mm -hmm. if it's the case that at tabari or Ibn Kathir or Sheikh al Sami bin Taymiyyah, for example, any Imam, any Mufassir from the Mufassirin, whether he's the Mufassir of the Mufassirin, like at tabari right? The, the, the commentator 
of the commentators, right, such a big... If he makes a claim, Umar that he has no evidence, we don't have to accept that. And this is, you can bring the biggest scholar to us, we don't. Even if it's the case, for example, I don't want to give an example because I don't need to use this as an argument against some random Muslim who doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm not going to use that as an example. But the fact is, we don't have to unless they have evidence. We're not just one way. We don't just say the non-Muslims have to bring Dalil. No, we say the Muslim scholars themselves, the Shaykh themselves have to bring the Dalil. Mind them Dalil, we don't accept. If they have no Dalil, we don't accept. The same for Ibn Kathir. So if Ibn Kathir, regarding Islamic, if he has yeah, an yeah. Islamic reference. Sir, I'm going to ask you now. You mentioned Can al No, no, please. Just wait. I'm going to finish it. I'm going to let you speak, right? And I, I do have to go soon. We have to wrap this up. You mentioned so far, Haytham Sidki, Al-Tabari, yes. Ibn yes. Kathir. I'm Sean W. You, Anthony. Simple Shady question. Nasser. It's very fair. With all due respect, Shady Nasser, yani, you know, like I don't him. even want to insult him. University of Harvard. He's Harvard's. stupid. University He's of Harvard. so bad. Yeah, but that's just, that's uh, a bit of uh, ad hominem. You're saying that because yeah. like there's some defect in his personality, he's stupid, it's a, it's therefore his argument is wrong. That's an ad hominem. It's his argument with demonstrating stupidity, right? Here's the question. You mentioned Haytham Sidki, which to me is more of a... Yeah, I've read his works, right? Haytham Sidki, I've read his Many Muslims like Haytham Sidki. No, no, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say he agrees with everything. I'm gonna be fair. Like I'm not gonna be one way completely. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. explaining. My point is that you can't discredit him no, and be like. No, I agree. I, just I told quote, you I like Haytham Sidki. Why am I yeah, yeah, yeah. Him? Sean W. Anthony. John Anthony's got Who, some good works on like Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right, according yeah, to yeah, him, the right. early communities accepted Surah 115, 116. Uh, based off early Islamic sources, he goes into them in an academic paper. Go on academia.ac.uk, find his work. I, I keep hearing you always say... Always a prophet, no, no. Uh, Ibn Rasul. Brother, you can't expect me to just carry like academic papers with me and just bring them out like this. If I tell you what it is, you can find it on your phone. With you about, when I when I quoted the, the, It's on camera, people can check what I'm saying. Scott, that's fine. Look at what I said. When I quoted you about, um, for example, mm -hmm. author of scripture saying this is scripture or whatever, yes. I give the reference, I'm fine. I didn't. You can go to your phone. I didn't go to my... I I memorized it. That's fine. You can go to your phone. I'm not, I'm not saying well, you know his argument, though. You know, you know the argument. No, 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 I know his argument. Who's the man who's going to your up with a coming hand? No, but people who did argument, we know he is the boy. Yes, yes. Regardless, yes, yes. Well, you know, you know what he's been saying about him in Abbasu. You know, I'm going to answer you any. Okay, look, I'm going to answer you. So, wait, wait. Just to add a bit more context. So, this variant, and it is a variant that is known by the scholars of Fiqh. Where is Let me explain. I know, let me explain. What is the Okay, Surah Amaida, 89, I believe. I need to check that. Wait, 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 wait. Let me explain it first, though, and let me land, and then you can answer. Oh, yeah. Okay, in the schools of Fiqh, the Maliki school and the Shafi school have difference of interpretation than the Hanbali school and the Halavi school over what the actual Arabic is and what you should follow. No! Yes, oh my God. yes, let me explain. No, the Hanbali Let me explain, let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. Oh, and you can oh. read this, you can read this very basic stuff. The Hanafi and the Hanbali hold to a different view. What they say is it is known that in Abdullah ibn Masud's codex, there is a variant in the Arabic where there's an additional Arabic word where the word consecutively in Arabic is written. They then draw on this for legal rulings what regarding Sharia. Sharia. This is legal rulings regarding Sharia. They then use this to apply in terms of what you do when you break your oath. When you break your oath in Islam, the Quran is clear what you do. It sets out criteria. It says, uh, okay, so first of all, you have to feed so many people. If you can't afford that, you free a slave. If you can't afford that, and it goes through this list, and then it goes to, and if you can't do all these things, then you are to fast for three days. But, and, that's, and if you look at like the, the Quran today, or any of the Ten Qur'an today, to my knowledge, it just says fast three days. But in Abdullah ibn Masud's codex, he had fast for three consecutive days, an additional Arabic word. Scholars, are you agreed on this? This is not a controversial issue. And for that reason, we are confident that there are, at least in some sense, multiple Qurans. Okay. There is Abdullah ibn Masud's. Oh, by the way, Ubayyim and Kab apparently had the same thing. So it's both those two. Ubayyim and Kab apparently also had this extra word in his codex. So there's variances in codexes among the companions who memorize the Quran. There's multiple Qurans. Do you want a response? There we go, I've landed. First of all, we say that there is one Quran and multiple Qur'at. One Quran and multiple readings of this Quran. Now you just appealed to Surah Al Ma'idah, right? Uh, there's so many things you said wrong, but I'm going to go one by one. Surah Al Ma'idah, you said that two of the readers, Mas'ud and Ubay bin Ka'ab, they read it differently. First of all, we believe in 10 different Qur'at which have different readings. This reading is valid. I don't know what you're talking about because I've heard this argument before. I don't believe this is the Qur'an. No, 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 no. It is. It was one of the Qur'at. Can you show me? No, no, no. Can you show me? This, this, no. I'll tell you why. No, no, no. I know why. I'll tell you how I know. Because I was in a discussion and debate with a Christian prior to this, a while ago. They bring different of the Qur'at to bring this argument, actually. They say, oh, there is Qur'at. I don't think this is Qur'at. No, it is. Can you show me? Al-Ma'idah is. 
No, I'm not, so I made as a whole chapter. So I'm talking about so I made at 89. At 89, which gives the ruling yes. of what if you break an oath, basically. Yes. How do you, what's the word? Like, if you break an oath, you. Yeah, if you have to, you have to do. Uh, yeah, you what's do. What's the word? Recompense or something like something that. Like I, I don't know what they, I'm not quoting you. Try and, um, you have yeah. to seek forgiveness, yeah? Yeah, yeah, you do certain things, right. Yeah. So, but, but the problem is for me, I want to address the. the I don't believe that is part no. of the Quran. You can discuss that. But well, I, I, you have my, I, wanted to, okay, I, I looked into it, I couldn't find it. So I, I couldn't find it. I don't get what you're explaining. I don't so, have okay, that. My point is it's different Arabic so, crimes. So, I don't hear what the answer is. I don't yeah. hear what the problem is. In a nutshell, what is the point? I got your point. There's multiple Arabic crimes. According to the companions. According to the companions. So if so, you believe that Allah revealed a Quran to Ibn Masood, and Ibn Masood is a prophet, and he really revealed one to Allah. I don't believe Allah revealed any of this. Please, him for a second of this was okay. Uh, okay, he made five points. I don't want some Muslim to hear. I don't understand what is meant in the Quran, but we know there's one Prophet Muhammad. It's not him. No, it's only fair that I answer because if a Muslim yeah, hears it and they get a yeah, doubt or yeah, something, yeah, yeah. it's not fair, and then I'll get the sin for it as well. No, no, no. No, I'm good. I'm so he's saying there's no But he's not showing there where the problem is. I don't get, I don't hear no problem. Like, I don't get, like, he said different, 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 different okay, readings, listen. different. Yeah. I want other people listen. First of all, I disagree with the point on the form of that. I think you misunderstood. You don't know, what, with all due respect, I don't think you understand the form of that. I'll tell you why. When it comes to interpretive matters, for example, talking about Ibn Mas'ud, and if he, like, for example, it's coming to if, yeah, 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 if, if he had a different uh, reading of Surah Al Ma'idah, Ayah 89, you said, I believe? I believe it is, yeah. Let yeah, me go check that just to make sure I got it right. I can say 89, it's not, not different reading, different understanding. Different, no, no, when you read his Quran, you read, the scholar says, you read, it's some commentary or certain stuff on it. That's, That's what happened. So I've not oh. too long, but I'm going to finish. Along with the Musab. But all those that make it are different. Um, um, Quran from what Allah revealed to Prophet Muhammad. Because there's that. a different Arabic word. Yeah, yeah. Can we know what the actual Quran is? It was inside huh? also the data. Um, Chris, I'm going to leave him to speak to you, but I want to yeah, finish our discussion. Yeah. I want to meet speak, you speak, and then me speak. Because I don't want to sleep yeah, midway. It's yeah, not yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. First of all, the former Dahib, when they talk, they talk about fiqh, okay, they talk about a ruling for this. They're not going to talk about Ibn Mas'ud, like this example of rejecting Al Fatiha and the last two surahs in the Quran, like An Nas and uh, Surah 113. They're not going to, this isn't something they go into, right? Maybe scholars from within the former Dahib, right, they independently talk about it, but uh, to represent a madhab, like uh, the madhab of Abu Hanifa, for example, or Imam Malik, or Imam Shafi'i, or Abu, uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, for example, right? This is not something they're going to. Mm -hmm. they, this is not something they would dispute the madhab just because of whether, for example, Masoud rejected surah. No, no. Surah, my point is that there are different, there different, there are different madhabs. This is not Wait. something the madhab mm -hmm. go into. This is they study fiqh, not whether Masoud rejected a surah or something. No, no. no. no the yeah. idea is that they are. They, it is known that there was an additional Arabic word, Abdul Rahman and Ubay Makam's codexes, that changed the legal ruling. So two schools don't accept that. They say no, no, no. Uh, we don't accept that. We say that you can fast on different days. You can fast on Monday, then Wednesday, then Friday. It doesn't have to be consecutive. That's interpretation of a verse. Then. Yeah, interpretation. Yeah, yeah. Yes, based on, the, based, based on the Arabic they have today, it doesn't have the word consecutive. But the other two schools today think, say that no, you do do it consecutively, and you can find this, this online. Very good thing but for, because they are aware of the additional word in those two codices. Yeah, Chris, I think this is definitely uh, an important point about chapter five, verse eighty-nine. Whether it's one of the parts of the Quran. No problem. I don't know it's eighty-nine. So I'm going to quote to you what Ibn Kathir says. It goes that. back to the same principle that I said. We accept that what the fuqaha say, or the mufassirin say, if they have a dalil, if they have an evidence. If they don't bring an evidence, that's to mm. me, that's not an authority. So what I'm going to ask you is this, because I don't want to go too much astray. I want to stick to Al-Fatiha and Ibn Mas'ud and his codex rejecting them, where he rejected and he made it very clear you rejected them. Now, if you take a look at, you, get, you didn't have a reference, like a reference on hand. I'm not going to press you on that. I'm going to grant you no problem, because I know what you're talking about, right? Yes, Suyuti's book, Imam Suyuti, right? He has a book talking about this. He gives different positions regarding Suyuti. Um, but whether this position is valid to begin with, that he even says that, that he, that he rejected it, I've not seen the evidence for that. But Yes, Suyuti addresses it, right? Now, Muhammad Hijab, when you spoke about this topic, he gave you a view. Yeah. I personally don't agree uh, with his view. Well, he, he talked, Wait, no, 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 Mas'ud. Oh, yes, so, yes. yeah. I, I personally disagree with him, but it's a valid view. It is, it is something which Yes, Suyuti explained, right? Now this view says that Ibn Mas'ud prior, he held this view and then he later repented for this, right? And there is multiple evidence for this, but the evidence I'm about to bring for this doesn't support just this view, multiple views, right? But um, I have to be fair and present the views, so even I may disagree with it, whatever. So this view says, the evidence for this would be, we have from the 10 Qur'at, right? Now we have chains for them, right? Now in four out of these 10 chains, it goes through who? 
According to like, like you talking for our paradigm, but can you line quickly because you've said okay, a lot okay. here? According to us, four of these ten qiraat, Masoud narrates them to his students. All of these qiraat include an nas. Uh, to the 113 and al-Fatiha. So this shows this would be an evidence that some scholars may use to support what Muhammad Hijab told you. There's another position which says no, there's no evidence that he even said this, right? Now I hold to the view of neutral. I don't mind either view. But I personally don't I need to see the evidence from even from the scholars and from Haytham Sidki that he said this. I want to know this position that he rejected this. That's the okay, basic what, Okay. <clears throat> it's very heavy. It's yeah, there's, there's a lot of a lot of things to go through. Yeah. Okay, so my issue here is that ultimately some companions of Muhammad, the, the Sahaba, had different understandings as to what the Quran was. Do you, what you mean? No, no. They understand that the Quran was that which was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi Okay, right. when you say, okay, if that's what you mean, then no, that's false. Because they all okay. understood it was revealed by Muhammad, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sorry, through Jibreel, uh, through Jibreel, sorry, to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi They all understand this. Uh, they may have eventually. Sorry, they may have eventually. Uh, but they certainly didn't understand the verses. They all would, uh, may have eventually came to that idea. But that's the, but that's that's the thing. But that's not what the, that's what the first meant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. by the way, um, yeah, the uh, the Kalats are not Mutawata. I know you're gonna say you're gonna say the Marine Van Putin, Sidki, which all no, no, Marine Van Putin. Marine no, but, Van Putin but, quotes Al Jazeera. No, no, he quotes Putin's, his Arabic. Uh, yeah, he's, he's studied this topic. Marine Van yes. Putin. But I mean, he's literally he only paid to millions to do this. For me, yeah. I can go as far as to say Haitham Sidki okay. understands this, and, they, and yeah. yeah. Well, he but, quotes Al Jazeera. Yeah, Van Putin. He does mention this stuff. Van Putin. Yeah. He mentions how seven of the ten, according to his standards, would be, and he goes on further as well. But it's a big topic. But he says to summarize his position of Van Putin. He says that seven of them were Mutawatir. He says there's three that are not Mutawatir. No, 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 no. You that's like a misconception. Uh, well, if you go on his, if you go on his blog, Mayim uh, Van Putin's blog, he has an article about this where he translates Al Jazari, who in the 15th century uh, expanded the canon of acceptable Qur'at from 7 to 10, and he gives his criteria, and he does not include Mutawatir as part of the criteria. Yeah, it's in Twitter. Sorry? He does not include Mutawatir as one of the criteria. Al Jazari. Which is in what? In his works. I can give you the name of it if you go on his thing. From where? What do you mean? From where? From 15th century, Al Jazari. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that's enough to say. Like, what the hell, 15th century? I'm gonna go to He's Europe. the guy who expanded it from 7 to 10. He's the guy who accepted as a canon that the old one by Ibn Mujahid in the 10th, yeah, Mujahid, Mujahid, Mujahid in the 9th, 10th century. Mujahid, okay, Yeah, but then later, the 15th century, Al Jazari expands it from 7 to 10. And Al Jazari is like, yes, yeah, Islam with he said he used to hold he used to hold that opinion, but then he asked for forgiveness. He repented of that opinion because he says the more correct opinion is that it's not mutawatir. That's fine. Just one second. Okay, so Quran no, no, is not no, mutawatir. No, 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 just one second. First of all, him saying that it's not a condition that it's mutawatir. If he even said that, first of all, I've not seen the reference for that, right? Joe, he does. Uh, but, Check uh, out uh, uh, his uh, blog. Yeah, yeah, I know. He says I know he responds to the claim that because Muslims appeal to vampire in a lot, they yep. used to, and he responds with that's a very fine. credible academic. But this claim is yeah. I'm not I'm not disputing yeah. his. Uh, his uh, knowledge at all. Good, good. Do I agree with everything? No. Yeah, that's fine. Likewise, that's fine. Haytham Sidki, do I agree with everything? Yeah, even though I like fine. him. But he is no, a credible scholar. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What's the so same for Shady Nasser? For reference for that, yeah, except for Shady Nasser. Shady Nasser yeah, is not like credible. Nasser. But no, no. Too shady. But, yeah, too shady. Yeah, too shady for my liking. But yeah. listen, on a serious note though, this thing would go back even to him. I'd have to see the reference. I have to see the evidence for that. Now, him saying that it's not a condition, right? Which we understand that when we look and study this as well, the Quran and the study in the history of the Quran, we know it's a condition, right? Um, that when we're told about that. this, that's, no, that's no. the very thing that's in yeah, question. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. That's fine. Um, but what I'm saying is that it's clear that doesn't negate the fact that it is mutawatir. Saying that it's not, for example, what we is accept, no, no, it's just an example. Wow. We can accept hadith, right? Mm. We Muslims accept hadith, for example. If the chain is like ahad, if it's one chain, yeah. we can say to accept a hadith, it's not a condition that it has to be mutawatir. Does this now mean that we have no hadith as a mutawatir? No, it's a non, it's a non sequitur. It doesn't follow. Yeah, from yeah, that, right? fine, yeah, yeah. But the, the still, the, the main thing is this, right? Because this is a bit like of, of the point. I, it's a good point, a question to ask, but I want to first deal with Masoud because that's fine. So Masoud, there's two suppositions basically. One before is you do this, it. before you do this, do you concede that, as far as you know, Al Jazari does indeed say it's not much evidence. No, I'm saying that based hey, sorry, on what repeat, I'm saying, if, if what I'm saying is true, and you go and you find Marin Van Putin who quotes his work. Then Al Jazeera's opinion no, it's not that is easy. that he did not accept Mutawatir. So first of all, it's not that easy. I'll tell you why. When we take a look at studying the, the scholars, right, Islamic scholars, even if we take a look at like Muslim scholars, right, like Imam Bukhari, for example, he doesn't just write as his Sahih, right? Yeah, he wrote it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Khalq yeah. al Bad, for example, right, the created actions of the uh, the servants, whatever, right. So 
this book, for example, and many other books as well by other scholars, we don't just look at a quotation from that. It's so in depth. It's so in depth. You look at the manuscripts of this scholar, right? What are the manuscripts, even of a scholar, right? Like Imam al Bukhari, for example, right? Or Al Bayhaqi, or any of these scholars, right? Um, Abu Mansur al Maturidi, um, Abu Hassan al Ashari. So if he's going for that and using the manuscript, we have to look more than that. We cannot just take his own. We have to look at the manuscript, verify it. This job is way too big. Even for me, it's, it's too big. This is why we have scholars who specifically don't go to these scholars, these Western academia as our authority, right? Do they make points? Uh, I see, okay, but they're not your authority, but they are my authority. If it's something, huh? They, they will be mine when I look they into are Islam. authority. Yeah, yeah, of course. And yeah. are you trying to convince me of your position? Well, what I'm saying is that yes, I would appeal to scholarship. Exactly, right? that's the problem. You didn't answer that. Should, are you Wait, trying to convince you me of your, posi of your position? position? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're trying to convince me you of your position by yeah. using evidences you know I don't accept. I'm sorry, but you're not yeah. doing good so yeah, yeah. far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, my point is that you're, you're wrong, like you're wrong to reject It's like me using the Quran to convince you. put it on My point is that if you reject scholarship, I don't know where to go. I really don't know where to go. Do you reject scholarship? No, what do you mean scholarship? Or is it just Western scholarship? Is it just Western? Scholarship is a very subjective term. If you are basically going to say, right, I don't like the Western scholarship, scholarship. I'm like, well, you well, there you are then. Example. When I you, you make an argument look at the against evidence. you, right, mm. I may use a scholar if I know the evidence. I wouldn't just use a scholar randomly and say, this is the position. But I would use a scholar with the evidence. If the scholar is basing this opinion, of uh, concluding it off of Eusebius, for example, I will go to Eusebius's work, like, for example, about the papers, book 3, chapter 39, right, where Max a uh, bearer of Peter or whatever. I will go to Eusebius's work directly. Eusebius's work is not rarely disputed. I mean, there's some people who dispute it, but that's to me is like a bit critical. I don't like that approach. No, but no, generally it's accepted. So I'll go to that, that text, right? Mm. So likewise, when we're talking about this, like, do I accept academia if it's something which is verifiable that I myself can go to and I can verify and we can look at the Muslim scholars as well, historically. Yeah. Yeah. Not a 20th century Muslim scholar or Christian yeah. scholar or whatever academic. No, we have to look at our traditions, right? Right, but what if a scholar comments on your traditions? Can you accept his view? Depends, okay. Do I accept that he has the view? Yeah, but do I agree with the view? No, 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 but can you? What do you mean? Say, for example, Marin van Putin translates Al Jazari and he shows you it and he says, look, Al Jazari never said Mutawata, or he's not in his letter. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good Will you accept that? That's a really good question. Okay. So if he translates a work from an yeah. Arabic scholar, for example, and he yeah. says, this scholar says this, would I accept it? Yeah. It's multiple things. It goes back to the other. I have to verify the manuscripts in totality. Did this scholar really, does this work say that? Is he, is he appealing to one manuscript? Because even when we're discussing Aqidah, Muslim to Muslim, like, uh, we have to Look at the manuscripts of Abu Mansur and Abu Hassan al Okay, well, manuscripts is a weak thing to appeal to. For example, in Hadith, you don't really have manuscripts. No, no. You have, you have traits and traits. No, no, you, you have manuscripts of people talking about like, how they knew people who had like, that view. We have manuscripts but you don't actually have their writings. We have manuscripts yeah. of, for example, Imam Bukhari Sahih. Yeah, but when though? Yeah, exactly. Right, so, so you wouldn't Bukhari, really appeal no, 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 to no, no. it. But manuscripts, yeah. for example, and there are some like on rocks and stuff. And I think Sean Anthony, you know about Sean Anthony? You read his yeah. work, right? About yeah, I quoted him earlier. Yeah, yeah I Sean Anthony. No, but yeah. it's different from recording. And, like, I'm not trying to say yeah, I read it, but I, I want to know. You said, do I know Sean Anthony? I'm like, yeah, I know Sean Anthony. Yeah. No, but I, I followed up by saying specifically respect to his work from Muhammad Sallallahu where he took out the existence. He gives the examples, right? right? right yeah. And he gives, he writes, he talks about things are written on rocks from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi You know, he actually rejects most, if not all, of the Syrah. Oh, what, sorry? Sean W. Anthony rejects most, if not all, of the zero. That's not a problem at all. Okay, I'm just, just making it aware. Even like, and, and that's another point as well. Like when it comes to the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it comes to like the early seerah, for example, right? You say like Ibn Ishaq, for example, or Ibn Hisham, right? I mean, yeah. This like a, it, we do it, subhanAllah, we have the same standard. I'm showing you our consistency. Our early seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ibn Ishaq, um, Ibn Hisham, what? We verify if they make a statement and we cannot verify it, we reject it. For example, I believe in uh, Ibn Ishaq's, um, or Ibn Hisham, sorry, his book on Sira, the Ali Sira, he mentions, for example, Rasulullah torturing uh, a Jewish man for his gold and saying, Give me your gold and putting a steel yeah. thing on him. We reject this because he didn't give a chain for it, right? So even yeah. our own scholars, we reject well, no, this. Like, no chain. So, so you're going to accept it. For a lot yeah, of. Gonna wait, wait, wait. This one is going to accept this, this, No, no, this, this, is, this is where it gets problematic. I'm joking, this is where it gets problematic go because. On. So for me, if I want to establish the historicity of something, or at least more probable than not that something is historic. You know, that's all the evidence, right? You yeah, but I'm also going to look at the historical criteria that we have as academics. So I would point to the earliest records. The problem with Islam is that they basically purge a lot of their earliest records. So for example, Sayyid uh, Bukhari, if you look at the six most authentic books of Hadith, they're dated much later than, for example, Ibn Ashaq, right? I know, I know what you're so so the, yeah, pro yeah, the problem I, I have though... Rubik made this argument, right? 
Oh, I don't know if he, he has. Made, yeah, he I'm not really, well, this is this is like um, it's mainly built, big Gabriel problem. Reynolds would make this. And many Daniel people would make this. The beginning of the first did this argument. Uh, he made it very Crowe big. would make this. Michael Cook would make this. Yeah, so would make this. We know about this right. My point though is that if if in Islam you have some of the earlier sources saying things. And they're mass repeated. There's a lot of ruwia uh, that goes back. Ruwaya. Ruwaya, ruwaya. I don't know who pronounces it for ways. We're talking about the Quran now. I don't the, understand what we're talking about. Wait, different narrations. About, different. Yeah, yeah. They supposedly go back, right? But they don't go back to Muhammad. They go back to some of the Tabi or Tabi'un or something like that, right? Some member of the Salaf. And they do it in mass. Like they transmit like 50 different ones of it. I know you're talking about based on yeah, 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 yeah. But my, my point though is that it seems reasonable to me using the historical approach that we have in critical scholarship to simply say, way, well, it looks, way, it looks likely, wait, 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 it looks likely that the early Sahaba believed that. No, no, but what you guys know is a good point. You know, it's a good point. It's a misconception. She doesn't go back to Muhammad. Imam Bukhari, for example. Let's go back to Muhammad. They don't give chains to go back to They don't go back to I know, that's what I'm saying. And you find that weak if they don't go back to the Prophet. The reason why, though, is they did not think of it that way. The early Muslim companions did not think it was essential to go back to Muhammad in chains. Because they didn't. How do you know that? Because they didn't. How do you know that? Because there's tons of very. So you want to appeal to later evidence to know what the Sahaba believe, but you don't appeal to the same evidence. No, even if a Shaq mentions chains. But the yeah, but chains are not complete. Weak, take a look at like, that's that's the whole point. The, the reason why they're weak is uh, partly because they're not complete. No, they're also not mutawatir. They're true. just singular chains. True, but there's tons of them. That's not true. So you have to believe that Ibn Ashraq just like what, made what stuff up or was massively confused about what people believe.